Hello, hello everyone. This evening, I wanted to discuss a topic as it relates to the womb chakra and how the womb itself is a portal and specifically around how we might be able to utilize the sacred womb and the womb chakra to access our Akashic records to support us with ancestral healing, ancestral clearing, and to bring into this realm and dimension what it is that we want to see manifested in the spiritual realm. So first and foremost, I am transcending just discussing the sacral chakra. I feel like when we discuss the sacral chakra as it relates to the womb space and our sexual energy, that we can somehow minimize our sexual energy and our kundalini energy. Well, why do I say this? So I'm of the mindset, and I spoke about this in other content that I've done, that essentially the seven chakra system has been used as an energy harvesting scheme within the false matrix. Uh, it has been used to siphon our energy okay so with that being said that's not to say that we don't utilize the chakras but it does mean that we might want to consider reconsidering how the chakras manifest in our reality and are we actually accessing the energy of the seven chakra system as it has stood within the false matrix okay so a lot of times if we aren't aware of the power that we possess, it's really easy for us to give away our power within the subconscious realm. This conversation is for anybody who tunes in, and yet I'm specifically going to be tailoring this conversation to female identified folks who are tuning in, okay? Now, the womb chakra, which I'm gonna get into a little bit more depth later on, is actually something that everybody can access no matter what gender you represent and if you actually have a physical womb or not okay so the womb chakra is available to anyone and yet the way that you access the womb chakra is going to vary slightly as opposed to whether or not you have a physical womb or a spiritual womb so we all have a spiritual womb but some of us have a physical womb as well so I'm going to be uh, tailoring this conversation a little bit more to the physical womb but anybody can tune in and access some tools and jewels from this discussion and if you got to hop off just know that you can find the full download of this live on my youtube page at the goddess keys and if you find value within this discussion you can also send me a donation at the goddess keys via cash app and with all of that, let's get into it. So what is the womb chakra? So the womb chakra acknowledges that the womb is a portal. The sacral chakra, on the other hand, acknowledges that the womb is a space for creation and our sexual energy. In my opinion, it can kind of minimize the power of the womb. The womb chakra acknowledges the fact that the womb is literally a gateway to the cosmos. Okay, it has actually been utilized as interdimensional portals. And a lot of times because we don't understand or overstand or understand the ways our spiritual technology works, y'all, that's how it gets harvested. If we don't know, if we don't claim it, someone else does, okay? So this is just something that we really need to, um, to just peep and keep in mind and thank y'all for everybody who's tuning in who's sending the love and all that kind of stuff and um, I'm gonna be if y'all have questions pop them into the chat and I'm gonna read them towards the end of the live and um, I'm just I'm gonna focus in on the message and then I'm gonna get to all the questions towards the end so if you have a question or a comment or something you want me to speak on you can just put it in the comment section below and I will get to it before I log off all right Okay, so with that being said, how is the womb a portal and how do we access it, okay? So I basically, I call myself a, a personal trainer for the subconscious mind. I support people with accessing their Akashic records. And if you do work with me, you will notice that I will have you access your Akashic records through your womb portal, through your womb chakra, 
okay? Because if you're seeking to be a genetic path cutter, if you're seeking to heal, in, um, in, I guess, intergenerational trauma, ancestral trauma, if you're trying to see actually what's within your ancestral records. So a lot of us have been trained in like the new age spiritual community to go through your pineal gland, right? To go through your third eye. Like that's how you're supposed to access your records. I actually don't agree with that um, and I am not just it's not to say that the pineal gland isn't powerful it's not to say that the pineal gland uh, doesn't have great potential but I say this for two reasons number one the pineal gland has been very manipulated within the false matrix so has all of the chakras but there's just something about the veils of illusion that is over our consciousness to keep us locked into this 3d perception of things in this limitation and a lot of that has been done through the manipulation of the pineal gland very 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 heavily okay that's not to say we don't transcend this that's not to say we don't clear this but the, um, the level of clearing that you're going to need to do because of the stuff that's been, um, been manipulated within your pineal gland um, is going to be way deeper than the clearing that you do uh, for getting to your womb space. Okay, so that's just one thing I have learned. I tried the, the generic route, going through my pineal gland to get to my Akashic records. Walls, 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 walls. When I started accessing my Akashic records through my womb space it was it was on it was on and popping because the womb is a portal so I don't know if any of y'all out there have kids have given birth but y'all will know that there is um, a lot of y'all may have experienced this thing of when you bring a being into this world that you are walking you're, you're moving between different dimensions when you do it this was something I experienced uh, when I gave birth to my son, I literally, I just felt like I was in between worlds for a few days. And, you know, a lot of times they call that baby blues and all that kind of stuff. But um, I really do think like I was, I, I, I opened up a portal and I needed to do a heavy level of integration. Um, and I didn't fully um, understand that at the time. But um, for folks who, you know, there's probably people out there who kind of know what I'm talking about. And that was really the first time that I really was like, oh, okay, the womb is doing something that I was not trained or prepared to even know what it was doing, okay? And so I will say my spiritual journey really catapulted through motherhood um, for a lot of different reasons, okay? But I'm not gonna sit here and say that um, motherhood is, is my only identity I'm not gonna sit here and say that if you're not a mother that you're not that uh, that you're not as valuable or any of that sort of stuff a lot of the programming that the false matrix will um, have us believe I'm actually here to offer a different narrative I think that particularly folks who identify as being female identified we've been boxed in and limited by our sexual energy and by our womb space and there's been a lot that's been done to have us normalize the siphoning of our sexual energy and that's been done a lot of times by design to keep us limited within the false matrix so I talk a lot about, um, on my different channels, I talk a lot about the false matrix and the way that it has suppressed our consciousness. Okay, and so I wanna talk about that a little bit more. The false matrix and consciousness suppression, all right? And how that connects to our womb space, all right? So back in the day, way, way, way before we had the many, many falls in human consciousness, it there is scientific proof that says that parthiogenesis was a thing that women were self-creating they were able to produce other life within themselves at will okay and there was no other counterpart needed to make this happen so if that's the case that shows us that some we lost some part of information some critical part of information as it relates to creation and our god goddess potential somewhere along the way that information was lost to us but the thing about dna is that and the thing about genetic records is that they they always are there they just need to be remembered reclaimed and reactivated 
Now, when we think about the seven hermetic laws and we think about, um, you know, first of all, hermeticism is a very like male dominated patriarchal kind of thing. One of the first principles that they talk about in hermeticism is all is mind. Uh, which I kind of think is is a falsehood. Like I'm, I'm all about expanding your consciousness and opening yourself up to the unconscious, but the way that you do that way surpasses the mind, okay? And the all is mind sort of thing is just a form of programming within the false matrix. I would say all is creation, all right? And how do we get here? How do we get into this world? We get here through the portal of the womb. So that's something that we need to remember. If we are seeking to reclaim ourselves from the false matrix, we don't go through the mind, we go through our source of creation. We go through the womb. The womb chakra, the womb is a portal. You might ask, well, where, where can I find this womb chakra? What color is it? First of all, the womb, uh, the womb chakra would be right below our so if the sacral chakra would be right where um, our sexual organs are, the womb chakra would actually be somewhere between the sacral chakra and what we would consider to be our solar plexus chakra. And uh, people, different people say that the womb chakra is different colors, okay? Some people say that it's kind of like a light orange, like a peaches, co peaches color. Others say it's like a pink or a magenta. I kind of see it as all three of those colors. Um, and a lot of Vedics, um, so a lot of Vedic spiritual teachers in India, they spoke about the womb chakra, but only in very closed circles. They didn't really uh, want to share the information publicly with folks. And, um, you know, this information about the womb chakra only came out in the 70s. Okay, so we were talking about the sacral chakra a lot, um, way longer before then. But the womb chakra stuff is only very recent that it's kind of uh, come out. And if you're able to access and unlock your womb chakra, and there are codes and there are keys that you will need to access, everybody else is, um, everybody's gonna have a particular way of accessing their womb chakra. But if you are able to access that, it is like a, um, an intergalactic highway to healing. And if you are having trouble getting to your Akashic records, I would highly suggest tapping into the womb chakra. Okay, so now if you go on my YouTube channel at the Goddess Keys, I have a whole chakra playlist, okay? And on in that chakra playlist, I have like a whole hour download talking about the womb chakra, the history, all that stuff. So I go way into this. So if this is something that's perking your interest, definitely subscribe to the Goddess Keys YouTube, go to that chakra playlist, find that video on the womb chakra. I also have a pretty long, like extended subliminal to access your womb chakra. In that download on the womb chakra, I also give different um, practices that you can do. I'm gonna talk about some of those today, but I probably won't get to all of them today. So if you are interested in this, keep pursuing this information, okay? So how do we access the womb chakra? Well, the first thing, okay, if you are, if you're like a light worker or if you know you're a very powerful spiritual being, you may have had some issues with your family. You may have had some very interesting family dynamic issues that you might need to heal from. So the first thing that you are going to need to do to access your womb portal, to access your womb chakra, is to heal your relationship with your mother. Now, that might be difficult for some folks to think about because I hear a lot of stories from people who say, but my mom did this, said this, was this way towards me. And please know that that is programming that the false matrix, that they want a lot of times if you're very powerful and if, especially if you have like the, this priestess path that you're supposed to follow. A lot of times you're going to have issues with the feminine. You're going to have to heal the wounded feminine from within to fully access your power. And this was done by design. So you may have many past lives or parallel lives or, or a lot of ancestral DNA to reconcile where the woman was suppressed, where the woman's sexual power was taken away. And that's showing up time and time again in your current reality. 
And a lot of times that's done through the mother, okay? Because the false matrix had to have programmers around us to get us to have a very consolidated view of consciousness and what our actual potential was. And so a lot of times they programmed uh, us to, and they, they gave us scripts to have a really wounded relationship with our mother, okay? So I get it, you know, that's, this is something that I've had to heal from as well. But if you don't have honor, if you don't have like an honor for your mother, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you um, need to put up with certain disrespect or abuse or whatever the story is, I, I get it. I get the, the levels that it can go to. But if you don't have that fundamental honor for your mother, then you're not gonna be able to access that wound portal, period, end of story. Because if you don't honor your mother, you're not honoring how you got onto the planet, okay? You got here, okay? R regardless of whatever happened or whatever went down, you got here through that portal, all right? And so if you spend a lot of time basically talking about all the ways that you were wronged by your mother, about all the ways, all the reasons why you can't stand your mother, you'll never talk to her, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're just perpetuating a, an intergenerational curse. Now, this is a delicate dance because you might literally, for your own emotional and spiritual well being, sometimes physical well being, you might be at the point where you literally can't talk to your mom. Okay, so I did a TikTok uh, earlier today talking about unconscious harm as it relates to karmic family members and how a lot of times karmic family they may be harmful in the physical or the 3d but a lot of times they're really there's like another layer of unconscious harm that's going on um, in other dimensions and in the unconscious mind and in the dream state and a lot of times that can be perpetuated through the mother okay and so some of y'all might be out there who have had you're healing an intergenerational cycle of the wounded feminine uh, women in your family pitted against each other with, with the competition thought form, tearing each other down, um, basically to disempower them and, and their, their priestess path, okay? And that was, that's all a part of the matrix programming. So um, getting out of the person and moving into the pattern. What's the pattern, okay? Uh, if you have a damaged relationship with your mother currently, what's the pattern of that? How was your mother and your grandmother? How was your grandmother and your great grandmother? Okay, start looking at things outside of people and move into patterns. Okay, so that's gonna really support you with healing your womb chakra. And so one thing that you're going to want to do is um, you also might want to give birth to yourself. If you've had a very traumatic experience with your mother, or you also might be somebody who never knew your mother. You Maybe you never knew your biological mother, and that might be really hurtful for you. Maybe your biological mother passed away and you feel this, this wound because of that, okay? Whatever that case is, the womb chakra is going to help you to heal that and um, and help you to access your power. Another thing that you might want to do though, so a lot of us actually come out of the womb traumatized. We have to think about how our medical system is set up. The bright flashing lights, um, just like weird stuff happens in the, in the hospitals to bring children into this world that's just downright traumatic and it really shouldn't be that way okay so real talk before you even start getting raised by your family a lot of times you're just immediately traumatized okay so it might be helpful to you to go through exercises where you're able to give birth to yourself to be reborn okay um, this is a way to reclaim your power to take your power back Another thing that you can do to start the process of healing your womb and accessing your womb chakra is to truly connect with the earth, okay? So we actually mirror, a lot of times when we think about the feminine condition in humanity, there's a lot of mirroring that happens as it relates to the earth and what the earth is healing from. In a lot of ways, the earth has been raped, she's been pillaged, she's been taken advantage of, she's been discarded, she's been used, she's been abused. 
And if you notice what's happening currently in our society, or not even in our society, but on the earth, things are shifting, okay? We're, we're noticing things around climate change. We're noticing that certain extinctions are happening. And we're gonna start seeing some really interesting things that continue to happen with the earth that's going to indicate that a new game is being played, okay? So just like we're taking our power back as um, in humanity, and we're starting to see a rise of the divine feminine, we're actually mirroring what's happening in the earth. The earth is raising her vibration. Anybody who is trying to just use her, abuse her, they are not gonna be on her frequency. The, it's the new earth frequency, okay? So if you can imagine the earth is leaving behind a really abusive relationship with a lot of uh, groups of humans, all right? And look, sometimes the, the breakup is hard. All right. Sometimes there's a lot of trauma with the breakup. And so that's what we are going to be witnessing more and more as we experience this mass quickening and evolution on the planet. And so I want to speak specifically right now for folks who are on the priestess path. If you are female identified and you are on the priestess path, it is so important that you honor and um, have complete reverence for your sexual energy and your womb space and to really work on reclaiming your womb space across all realms and dimensions from the ways that your energy has been siphoned from the ways that your energy has been taken advantage of okay and what's that what that's going to require is to really take a, a really strong inventory of your dreams your creations and also your your overall sexuality and sexual energy, okay? Because um, it is a very there's a very strong courting that happens with the people with the person that you or the people that you share your sexual energy with. There are soul contracts that are made. It takes a good seven years sometimes to clear your womb space, and so you want to be really picky about who your you're sharing this energy with this precious creational energy with and this goes a lot against the programming that we were taught to be modern women right um you know a lot of times this was like the whole feminism thing of like we're reclaiming our sexual power and we get to choose as many partners as we want and all that kind of stuff a lot of that was programming now here look I'm not over here Bible thumping. I'm not trying to Bible thump and say that you just need to marry like one partner and just, you know, like I'm not, I'm not even going there with it. Okay. I'm just saying be very picky about who you share your sexual energy with because courtings and soul contracts happen. Okay. Um, it is the most precious thing that you can, um, or energy that you can share with another and um, things are not as they seem all the time on the third dimensional realm, okay? So somebody can be saying the right things, right, to get you to um, give away your sacred sexual energy, and that could be cleanup, energetic cleanup that you might need to do for years upon years and years. Um, if you are interested in the soul contract revocation process, this is something I go into in depth on my Patreon. I actually am releasing an ebook um, as it relates to revoking soul contracts, and I'm leaking it to my Patreon community first. Um, it'll eventually be available to everyone, but right now I'm testing it out in private sessions as well as with my Patreon. Um, subscribers but something I would say um, if you do have a divination system that you do is to start looking at each of your sexual partners that you've ever had and to see what the energy is between that you might start seeing that there are certain aspects of yourself that you need to reclaim from that sexual energy at exchange and that could have happened a really long time ago Something else that we know is that sexual energy is very much related to currency, all right? Uh, finances, all right? And a lot of times the harvesting of sexual energy, especially as it relates to folks who are on the, the priestess path, folks who see themselves as sacred or who know that they have had um, sacred uh, divin um, diviners or um, seers within their lineage, um, this is something that you definitely want to be really protective of because you might be um, undoing intergenerational patterns of sexual woundedness and trauma and um, 
And a lot of that is related to your actual creational power. Like you need that power. Everything that's been siphoned from you, it's time for it to, to come back to you at this time, okay? So uh, if you are seeking to activate your womb as an actual portal, I'm gonna re reiterate some of the things I've shared so far. Number one, heal your relationship with your mother. And I was specifically speaking to um, female identified folks, but I'm actually, now I'm gonna speak to male identified folks. So you don't have a physical womb, but you still do have a womb chakra in the etheric. If you are interested in accessing your womb space as a portal, you honor your mother. You honor the mother. You honor the divine feminine. That's another thing that we're going to start seeing. The, the, the male identified folks who um, have this, this very like huge pent up rage towards the feminine. And a lot of this is matrix, false matrix programming. Um, and false matrix, why do I say false matrix? The matrix is the mother, okay? It is, you know, if we think about the spider's web, how the, how the spider creates this web, the false matrix is full of false web work that keeps us um, attached to things that are not in resonance with our soul essence, okay? Uh, getting out of the false matrix actually means returning back to the mother, okay? And that's why we're, we're gonna start seeing patriarchal systems crumble more and more and more. Not... My phone, like, completely overheated when I started talking about like fall of patriarchal systems. I guess I am still alive. Okay, that's weird. Try to remember the place that I left off at is how you access the womb as a portal. So first of all, you want to heal the relationship with your mother. If you're male identified, you also heal the relationship with your mother. If you have rage towards your mother, if you have rage towards the feminine, start alchemizing it is okay um everybody has rage towards the mother everybody has rage towards the feminine okay the feminine the mother a lot was done to manipulate the mother to uh, manipulate the feminine to keep us in cycles of trauma so it's totally natural to have rage towards the feminine but this is not the time to just be acting from for, from rage of the feminine this is your time to heal so if anybody out there who's masculine identified I'm here to say like it is take this as a sign like if you know you have rage that needs to be alchemized as it relates to the feminine this is your time to heal that okay because that baggage is not going to be able to come with us in the new earth same way for the um for uh folks who see themselves as fem female identified um if you have rage towards your mother you have rage towards yourself you have rage towards your own feminine nature pack light let it go it's time to alchemize it okay you cannot access your sacred power as um, in god goddess in form if you're doing all that okay if you're holding on to that unalchemized rage all right the next thing you want to do is you want to take audit of how you are utilizing your sexual energy so you want to take audit of the partners that you are uh, sharing sexual energy with or that you have shared sexual energy with. And uh, you want to reclaim your power, cut cords of attachment, revoke soul contracts to give any part of your sacred self away. Um, because one big thing about, the, um, about burning karma, healing karma is that's kundalini energy. That's our sexual energy. We need that energy in order to alchemize a lot of trauma and move from the silicate DNA that we currently have, which is much more electrical and mechanical in nature, to a more carbon-based DNA. I know a lot of y'all might have heard the opposite, that we're moving from carbon to silicate. That is absolutely not true. I will do more content on why I say that. Oh, carbon is magnetic. We're moving to magneticism. Right now, we are more electrical or electromagnetic beings. We're moving back into the magnetism of the great central sun. What's gonna get us there is our sexual power and our sexual energy. So uh, it's time to alchemize a lot of the shame narratives around our sexual energy. And it's also time to honor our sexual energy. And so that also means uh, you know, when we think about the ways in which we're encouraged to utilize our sexual energy in the false matrix, a lot of times those are just schemes to get us to power up false systems that are out of alignment with 
Earth's ascension, okay? And it leaves us in a state of disempowerment. So you wanna do an audit of where your se sexual energy is going and how it's being used and pour that sexual energy into yourself for a while um, as you go on your healing journey, okay? A lot of us also have to alchemize some really um, thick ancestral patterning around what we thought love was. A lot of us thought love was codependency. A lot of us thought love was self-sacrifice. A lot of that plays out in the ways in which our partnership narratives occur. We're we're alchemizing that we're detoxing that and so that means for a time i know that a lot of us have been uh, conditioned to think that sexual energy was about exchanging between two partners but for a moment in time challenge yourself to pour that sexual energy back into yourself back into your creations for a while as you're on your healing path and uh, lastly i want to reiterate your um your womb space is a gateway to your Akashic records, all right? As you enter your womb portal, you will start seeing a lot of the manipulations of the false matrix. That's when you will start getting under the hood of a lot of the drama and the trauma that's been happening within the false matrix. I have a meditation on my Patreon. If you join the Galactic Black Rose tier, where you are accessing your womb chakra and you're getting under the hood of things. And this is the first step to accessing your Akashic records is going through the womb portal and doing massive cleanings through your womb chakra. All right. So that's the way I'm going to say your Akashic records. Um, I don't teach Akashic records from the third eye. I teach it from the womb. All right. And this is, this is, this is the cosmic gateway. And this is the way you start to fast track your access to your multidimensionality and your God, God self. Okay, so with that being said, before my phone overheats again, y'all, because y'all see I'm in the desert out here, uh, I'm going to see if there were any questions that I missed or could answer. Okay, Party on the Moon says, do we live in a simulation? Yes and no. Um, I think everything is a mirror. I think we live in a mirror, actually. Um, I don't, I don't want to give so much power to the false matrix and say we live in a simulation. A lot of times it may feel that way. Um because a lot of times the world is mirroring the karma or the trauma that we need to heal okay so that's why weird uncanny uncanny coincidences happen but it's more so because we we're engaged in a sacred mirror with each other okay 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 all right just checking for any other questions Okay, so I have a question. My mom is actively trying to sacrifice me. What do I do? Happens all the time. I know, it's, it's wild, right? We live in the wild west. If I had to describe the unconscious mind as anything, it's the wild west, y'all. It's the spiritual black market. It goes down. Um, compassion, love, give yourself space, right? Just because I'm telling you to honor your mother, that doesn't mean that you need to put yourself in situations that are going to actively harm you, okay? Um, it's going to be a lot easier to send your mother love from afar and to honor the life that she gave you from afar and to do the genetic path cutting and ancestral healing work not in her physical presence than it will be if you're trying to smile in her face and you know that she's trying to sacrifice you. Like that just seems diabolical like don't do that to yourself you know so um honoring your mother doesn't mean staying in codependent relationships that are not good for you okay and this is all about reclaiming love outside of the false matrix love starts with self and that's why i'm saying too and this is you know that some people might be like oh that's narcissistic you know um we've been programmed to think that love is something completely different and if you don't believe me, just look at all the Disney Channel movies and all the like romantic comedies that got thrown in your face growing up. OK, and take a look at them now. And you're like, you're going to start being like, whoa, that's kind of problematic. Why is that so problematic? Um, we have to relearn love. We have to remember love and a love outside of codependency. And that starts with a complete honor for yourself. OK, and you honor yourself and you reclaim your boundaries and you uh, reclaim yourself outside of codependency. Um, and then you honor your mother, okay? And it's it's a cyclical thing. So I'm sorry that that's happening to you. Um, it happens a lot. 
And also another thing I would suggest that you do for the person who made that comment is um, start looking in your um, karmic records around where sacrifice karma is coming up. That's a whole thing. I have a genetic path cutting tier on Patreon where I teach you this divination system to start getting at specific karma that you need to clear. Crucifixion karma is real and that's why um, we, we live in this like system of weird sacrifice and stuff. So that's something else I would check out. Okay. And she's a Satanist. Also, you might want to look at, you know, uh, you, another thing you want to do is, um, I talked about this on, on um, my channel um, a few days ago, the mirror effect, okay? Whatever is being reflected to you, there is in some realm or dimension that is something you have done, okay? Um, so I'm not saying that you're doing that in this dimension, but I am saying like we have different parallel versions of ourselves and we're not always perfect and a lot of times what happens is timeline bleed throughs or another thing that happens is like your family did that your family were satanists and they sacrificed people in like many other timelines long long ago and that, that was never cleared or reconciled and so it's coming back into your reality so you can clear it now okay so like start looking at this from a ancestral karma lens too okay and then you can e you can transcend it a lot easier if you look at it, if you take responsibility. Yes, wholeness, reflection, sending love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, y'all. Okay, hold on, I just skipped over some comments. Okay, um, someone says, my narcissistic mother, she's dead and gone and I really miss her. Um, honor her, you know, so um yeah start connecting with your womb space um go on my youtube channel at the goddess keys go to the chakra playlist that i have go on that download i have on the womb chakra i give a whole bunch of it was a few months ago i don't remember all of the stuff i gave but i gave something a very specific practice on reconnecting and healing your relationship with your mother whether or not you're in her physical presence or not so i would highly recommend checking that out i've gotten a lot of good feedback about that um and it's been helpful to folks. And then as you start clearing your womb space, manifestation just like speeds up y'all. It really, really does speed up, but we have to reclaim our power and our sexual energy that's been siphoned from the false matrix. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there y'all.